Hey guys, I want to do insert this little clip before you watch um, the interview with Joe Meckler, aka Joey Boom. There was a technical issue where the only video that got recorded was um, on Joe's end. So my video, for some odd reason, something happened with Zoom. Um, I don't usually use Zoom. I use a thing called Zencaster, um, but it just recorded Joe's video, which uh, it's you know what well, is what it is. He has a great room, which you'll see, um, but. Uh, in the future, this shouldn't happen again. I think I figured it out if if I use Zoom again. But um, you're probably noticing that I've I finished the drywall behind me up where I record the podcast, and I finished painting it uh, earlier, right before I just did an interview with um, Don Lombardi of DW Drums, which will be out in the next couple weeks. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, no, hopefully there's no more technical issues in the future. But enjoy this episode with Joe Meckler about the Delaware Drum Show. Hello and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. Today I am honored to be joined by my old friend, Joe Meckler, aka Joey Boom. Joey, welcome back on the show. Bart, it's always such a pleasure to be with you, man. And uh, as I said to you earlier, I'm so proud of your progress here with Drum History Podcast. It's just wonderful and congratulations on it. And thank you for providing such a great reference for drummers across the globe. It's wonderful. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, especially coming from a guy like you. And um, some people may know this. I've talked about it a fair amount. You were, I believe, the first interview that I did at all. Like, I think it. I think Kelly's episode was number one because I thought this is a good broad episode to get people hooked. And then you were number two with the World War II drummers, which, I mean, come on. I mean, to this day, it is my <laughs> abs- one of my favorite episodes just because it was so... <gasps> <laughs> interesting and deep and i you got me addicted to that world war ii era because it's come up in a lot of episodes about oh rogers okay they were making this during wartime it's 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 like an endless uh there's a lot of stuff that comes out so um yeah you were you were an early one on the show <laughs> very much appreciated and uh it was a pleasure to be able to um share my passion with you with someone who is passionate about sharing others passionate drum information and uh, i really appreciated it to assist to get the word out and to just man take it into which we are the 21st century so it was uh wonderful and uh i was honored to do it and knew that man it was going to be something that was really going to uh carry on and wow you i mean how long have you been doing this now Uh, Since October, we recorded in April 2018, and then it released October 2018. So Uh, uh, that's fabulous. Yeah, quite a quite a long time. But it's wonderful. um, And we actually got a chance to meet, um, I believe, a few times. But but really at the at the Chicago show, checking out your booth and all that stuff. Um, Indeed. But so we're here to talk about, um, I'm sure, a bunch of different stuff, but primarily your Delaware drum show, which I have a shirt and I love it. (laughs) I am so geeking out about the drum show. I cannot tell you. Yeah, it it as Vincent uh, Ward has said on different episodes that it's it's just his absolute favorite show. Oh, that's um, wonderful. I've yet I haven't I, been able to go and, and man this year I don't know if I can make it. My wife is pregnant. I got a two year old. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. And um, it's just chaos. And you, I'm sure. so we'll I'm we'll sure. talk more details. But so. Joe, why don't you tell folks about the show and then maybe we can kind of uh, segue into the history of it and um, and I'll let you just take it away with that. Okay, sure. Well, first things first is uh, which I always uh, promote is one of the things for everyone that uh, listening, watching this podcast, even after you can always visit DelawareDrum.com. I worked very hard in putting together the website to supply any and all information, not only about what's happening currently with uh, this year's show, but as well as past shows. And if you have any questions in extreme detail, DelawareDrum.com, man, and that will uh, give you anything that you would need to know about anything about the show. Yeah. Um, I have to say that uh, when I, I got into this, oh uh, man, you know, years ago, I attended the original, my first drum show as a vendor, if you will, was the original Delaware drum show that was run by a fellow named Joe Gilday. And I did about two or three 
of those shows. And it got me to the point to meet, you know, some other people and find out about this drum show, vintage drum, custom drum uh, hobby and situation. And uh, it, it, it's where I decided to narrow into the niche of the World War II era because I started to realize, wow, it, I, you see it here, you see it there, but um, you don't see it all in one spot. So it, it um, inspired me to go in that direction and make that happen. Then um, it was like, well, Joe is no longer doing the show. He's moving to Florida as he did with his wife, but apparently uh, underlying there was um, a medical issue there and Joe moved to Florida. And unfortunately, like four months later, he passed away from ALS. Wow. Gotcha. So the, the, the Delaware drum show was in limbo at this point. And people are like, who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? And it took me a little longer to build up m my knowledge, my collection, I then attended the big gun show at the Chicago show, you know, as a newbie. And I was scared, man, running with the big dogs, but was able yeah. to establish then myself and, and to be able to meet the most important, heaviest vendors of vintage, custom and new drum symbols and accessories across the East Coast to where then I uh, approached a, a buddy of mine locally, Mike Giuliano, who is the creator of uh, J Drums, his own custom line, and owns a, a drum shop here, and said, I'm thinking about taking over the Delaware Drum Show. With his help, we were able to establish the first one, and I then reached out to these vendors and said, hey, man, I'm thinking about taking over the Delaware drum show and producing it. And because I was able to have established myself people, which to this day, I am so, so grateful for these people as far as, which I'll talk about a bit more in detail later, but from Maine, Rochester, Western Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Western West Virginia, Nashville, yeah. we're like, we're in. <laughs> the very first show was at the Elks in um, Wilmington. And I have to tell you, like years before in my teaching career, walking up to a building for the first time thinking, am I going to be here for a long time? I have no idea what's going to happen. And I am terrified. And within, I have to say, the first hour and a half, I had people coming to me complaining, going, I couldn't find a place to park. <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> Yeah, my GPS I, took me down the street. Or something. <laughs> like it's I your fault. Say, I have to say that I looked at them going, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. But inside, I was like, yes. <laughs> so I, we literally, I knew within two hours, we had already outgrown that venue. Oh, yeah. So I went on search then for uh, another venue. We hit a couple of places. One place was like a wedding catering joint. The fellow did not know how to book it. He was like, how many people are coming? I'm like, I, I, I don't know this. And he said, hey, do you know about the North Shrine Hall in Newcastle? And I was like, the, the, huh? the who, the what? <laughs> so long story short, we were able that day to go to the North Shrine. As soon as I walked in that room, I felt the vibe and said, this is it. Yeah. This is the place. And it's the perfect venue. It's a big giant main room with a big giant stage where the huge consignment area is. There's a side room down the hall where the clinics are held. They have a, a bar that's on site. They have great food and kitchen that to serve there. And the, the place is, it's a little battle worn. But that's where everyone was like, we love the vibe of this place, man. Yeah, that's where cool. I thought, oh, man, this is, you know, and people are like, no, we love it. And it's just a wonderful hang for like minded people who are passionate about stuff that you hit, yeah. regardless of what it is. And uh, that's the, the word about it is that it's. It's just a great hang, which is really what it's all about. It's not about 
any glitz or glamour and, you know, of the facility and this big giant. It's having an area where people are nothing religious, nothing race, not age, not playing ability, any kind of affiliation other than we all have a like passion for that day and everything else stays outside. Yeah. And man, uh, n- not only is it the uh, the ability to have that area, to create a t-shirt, to hunt down and, and solidify the vendors, to get excellent clinicians that may not be big, splashy, big names, but these people are passionate They're dedicated. They are great communicators. They have great online presence. And when attendees leave those clinics, they're going to walk out more inspired and more educated than they did when they walked in. That's what's paramount to me about having great clinicians. From what I've seen is you you do have people like Brooks Tegler and Daniel Glass and these guys who are, I don't want to say you're a history focused drum show, but um you do have a bit of that, like, uh, like it's it's all about that 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 looking back and studying this stuff. Where so is the Chicago show and other ones, but you almost seem more specialized and uh, a little more niche. And and I do think talking about the venue, it's really good that you do pay attention to people who are saying like, Joe, we like this place. This is good. Um, as opposed to just what's better for the bottom, you know, bottom dollar and 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 what works better for you. It's, it's about people enjoying it. So it's cool that you, you're a man of the people, you know? (laughs) And it's, well, it's, that's what drum shows are where I usually give the same, I don't want to say soupy because it's really heartfelt that I, you know, I say at the beginning of the clinics, I can provide these, the venue, I can have a cool t-shirt. I can be able to have people graciously donate, which we'll talk about as well. Mm-hmm. Door prizes, raffle prizes. I can invite the best clinicians, the meet and greet celebrities. I mean, you know, Liberty DeVito, Bernard Purdy, Brooks, Daniel Glass, David Usikinen. Um, but if no one attends the show, it's a failure. Yeah. And just because, you know, I'm Joey Boom and I produce the show, it's not my show. It's our show. Yeah. We all are responsible for the success of it. And to be so grateful to have people say, yeah, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to support this and then enjoy it. It's everything, man. It's yeah. just it's the whole idea. It really yeah. is. So it's our show. It's not, oh, look at this place. And people are like, well, what happens if you outgrow this place? I said, I'll go to a second day. You know, <laughs> sure. that would be amazing. Yeah. I'm not leaving this place, man. I'm that's not. Awesome. Because why destroy the mojo? I mean, that's what vintage drums are about, which leads up to the custom and new drums, cymbals, and accessories, it's all leads, it's all together, and it's its a wonderful thing. It really yeah, is. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, why don't we, while we're you know talking about it, just early on, tell people the date, and I believe you kind of said the location, but let's tell them where and when so they know while we're listening to this. Uh, it's, it's coming up in February, right? <laughs> yes, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> it is the uh, 27th of February this month, and it is at what's known as the Nor and You Are Shrine yep. Hall. That's 198 South DuPont Highway in uh, Newcastle, Delaware. And again, DelawareDrum.com for all of these details to know every single thing you need to know about the show. Yeah. Now, um, and I know every drum show, you know, promoter and and person who runs it has to deal with this now uh you've had to deal with some mandate stuff you want to just get that out of the way and tell people to deal with that i i certainly will and of course as it is everywhere uh when i when i did the mandate post wow it it is very much a hot button item and i'm not here today to use this as a platform for my personal beliefs. I'm here today to say in the times that we are in to try and accommodate the most people that I can 
I have to keep public safety in mind. The Delaware mandates are definitely masked indoors, which will happen. Mm -hmm. The entrance mandates are um, proof of double vax and booster or a 72 hour proof of negativity, even if it's a home test. I'm not asking you to be vaccinated. I'm not asking anybody to go against their beliefs. I'm giving them the opportunity to go just get a home test. You show up with 72 hours negative. Come on in. If your beliefs are what they are, I welcome that. Just show us that you're negative. Wear a mask indoors as much as it's going to be required within the environment that you're in and do not miss this event. Yeah. And I mean, that's it in a nutshell, Bart. I can't yeah. make it any simpler than that. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, a political thing. You're literally following the state guidelines. And when I was at PASIC this year, I mean, it was very much like you. I, I had to show proof of vaccination. You had to walk. You had to wear a mask the whole time, which Sometimes you go to places and it's like mask required and no one has one. I'll tell you at PASIC, it was very much a every single person had a mask on the whole time. So yeah. I think that that can that tone can be set where if everyone's on the same page of like, listen, I don't care what you believe. Like you said, it's just something you got to do. Then yes. get over it and move on. Um, yeah. So um, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of emails, but um, oh, I think my you're, God, Bart, you're doing I the right thing. When I posted that, and, and again, I'm not going to get deep into it, but boy, when I, when I made that post, boy, for three hours, I was under some serious attack. Yeah. And to say, you know, emotionally that it didn't rock me because, you know, I pride myself as being um, a, a, as a top-notch restoration and custom vintage creation artist and the Delaware Drum Show to have any negativity heaped upon it publicly. Wow. It kind of rocked me. However, uh, two things was wonderful that came from it is I know that from a marketing standpoint, when I post stuff, people are reading it <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and that, you know, people were passionate about the drum show to spark that much emotion about the conflict between their beliefs and what they want to do. So yeah. uh, once I, I realized that I said, okay, you know, this is a good thing. And uh, look, I was damned if I did or not. Yeah. And the lesser of the two was going to be the way that I was going. So, you know what, man, yeah. I, you know, I'm here to run a drum show. I'm not here to be political or draconian or any of that, yeah. man. It's, just do that little bit and enjoy it. And if perhaps you cannot just do it, man, I'll see you next year. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it is, that simple. You're doing the best that you can. And um, yes, it, it is what it is. Um, so let's talk going down our list here of kind of talking points, admission, and then we'll get into door prizes and raffles and stuff. Which Wonderful. If you got a drum show, you got to have uh Oh, yeah, prizes and, and raffles. So what's the Absolutely. deal with, with that? Well, the admit the admission this year is fifteen dollars. I'm also going to do my best to have um, tap and card pay, you know, with a yes. register. So sure. this way, uh, attendees, let's say they're coming to the show and they've got maybe four hundred bucks cash instead of going through admissions, T-shirts, raffles and leaving 50 at the door. If they can kind of in their mind justify, well, if I drop this on the card, I can hit the floor with $50 cash and ultimately give it to the vendors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, again, being the, the people minded, uh, in, instead of it just going, how much money can I get from these people? It's like, well, how much money can I get to the vendors who some of these people have traveled, man, hotels, yeah. gas tolls, you know, they're putting it on the line. So yeah. 15 bucks admission. The T-shirts are 15. The raffles are like three for five and 10 of which, you know, I've got some items to show um, in uh, detail. If you like, I can kind of just segue right into that. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. And, and I want to say that uh, and while you're kind of getting stuff together, I would say that at the people should buy raffle tickets at the Chicago show and at the Music City drum show. Just by pure luck, I won uh, snare drums, <laughs> the, the grand prize, the last two shows I've been to. So 
people can rest easy that I will not be at this show to win the grand prize. But I have them behind yeah. me. I won a WFL three snare and then a love custom drums uh, snare as well. Fabulous. Just by buying a ticket. So buy your tickets. I'm telling you, yes. I mean, there's nothing to lose. It's so fun. Well, well here, well, let me just give you an example. Yeah. Uh, first off, uh, if I could talk a, a little bit about, um, you know, this, yeah. which is the t-shirt that is the Delaware drum show logo that I created years ago. And as you can see, it's a combination of honoring modern drums with the modern leg, but yet the vintage shield yep. and bars from vintage drums. And then it creates a D and the letters that are inside are JG. And I did that uh, as an honor to Joe Gilday, yeah. who was the originator and Very the guys nice. who were in the know that, you know, they looked at it and they were like, wow, man, yeah. well done. I went, well, of course. Sure. So then um, as years went on, which this will be the fifth show, of course, within six years, because I had to miss uh, last year yeah. or I chose I chose to not have it last year. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, at that point, um, Neil Pert had passed away and I thought, wow, man, wh why don't I try to do a tribute shirt to Neil, of which then, I, and, and I'll get into later about the clinicians, I then, hopefully you can see this, I then altered nice. the design yeah. and made it NP and 2112. That yeah. was last show's t-shirt. So then this year, um, unfortunately, as we know, Charlie Watts, our beloved Charlie, yep. had uh, passed away. So this year's t-shirt is going to be dedicated to Charlie. It's going to be very similar to that. The shield, <laughs> excuse me, the shield will be CW. And then I contacted Don McCauley, who is a noted performer collector. And his um, uh, main position is, as you probably know, mm -hmm. is he is the drum tech for the Rolling Stones and has had a very close relationship with charlie over the years so i asked him i said i'd like to do a tribute t-shirt to charlie what would be something i could put on it that would be a bit more personal and inside instead yeah. of just painted black weight yeah. on a friend etc cetera, etc cetera. and he said well mick always referred to him as the wembley whammer because He's from Wembley. So I chose to then make it the same, the same logo. Yep. It'll be CW and here we'll say the Wembley whammer full, full front. Awesome. So um, one of the awesome things that just recently had happened was, is that Don got back to me and he said, he said, Hey, um, I let the family know Charlie's family. And I sent them a picture of the, the shirt logo and they are requesting three large <laughs> and one medium for the granddaughter. I wow. went, oh, yes. That's I said, awesome. can, can you please, please, when they get the shirts, get them to take a picture of them wearing it. And, you know, Bart, that's what it's all about that right is, there, man. That so, is, so you've made that, it on the inside. I mean, seriously, that is. um there's nothing cooler than that. I know guys who've yeah. written books where they can get them in the hands of of other, you know, their their idols, and it's just like that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed, cool. cool. So also, uh, okay, as you said, then um, the, so the t shirts, those tribute t shirts, will be fifteen dollars. We also have past shirts like this generic that'll be ten, mm -hmm. and then the white ones are five. Come and get them; we can give you a deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good deal. Even fifteen dollars for a shirt nowadays uh, is is a good deal. So it's not. It's good you're not charging fifty. You're, like I was at the last, yeah. the Rolling Stones show in May or November. I mean, and and it was. It's the Stones, but it's a fifty dollar t shirt. You know. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> but you have to buy it. <laughs> yeah, of course. And yeah. it's the, the, this is a one off. Yeah. This is it. So it's the Delaware show. It's all connected. And I've decided that each year now, because of uh, the success of the shirt, you know, I'm always trying each year to upgrade the show and make things a little better and read what 
is going to just continue to make the show evolve and grow. It's really important. So it's just not yeah. somewhat stagnant, you know? Yeah. Sure. Um, so some of the other uh, raffle items, I also decided to spread it around to some of the local uh, drum shops where, you know, there a lot of the vendors, some of these young guys are making the commitment, Bart. They're making the effort to either rent, own buildings, spaces and offer drum shop workings of new vintage custom stuff for man people to walk in and and offer them things for them to buy i mean it's i am so proud and impressed by these young men taking the the, the step to do this so yeah. i figured let me try to help them additionally with advertisement to the show and get them to be a part of the door price raffle situation. So one of the fellows who I was just at yesterday in Willow Grove is Keith Sesniak of Pocket Percussion. Yep. He offered this beautiful coffee mug. And of course, you may be saying, geez, a coffee mug. Woohoo. I love mugs. Well, <laughs> well, he put on top of it a $50 gift card to wow. his shop That's in great. Willow Grove. Yeah. So if awesome. you get this. And of course, if let's say you live down in Delaware, it could be online, et cetera. So that in, in addition to this amazing wow. metal DW snare drum, it's, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, it's full brass. This thing has amazing weight to it. This, you could own this for $5 <laughs> ticket three for 10 it's insane yeah and someone's got to win it i mean really you, oh and like, the, at man 3 30 the drawing start and somebody walks out for five dollars ten even if they buy multiple tickets 20 yeah. bucks let's say they walk out with that drum unbelievable another person that uh, i believe in wholeheartedly is years ago i came in contact being here in new jersey with this drumstick company, um, which a lot of people don't know about, is Capella. I don't know if you can read that there. And once I had these sticks in my hand, I went, oh my God, I'm home. Hmm. Well, Capella years, years ago went out of business and I've been chasing that feeling ever since. And I have to say that I have rediscovered it. Um, hopefully you can see that. I've yep. rediscovered it with LA Backbeat Sticks, Frank Kinsel in yep. Louisiana. He's the sweetest guy you could ever meet. He is passionate and dedicated about making quality drumsticks. And man goes through the trials and tribulations of the lathe breaking down and, and de defective product of wood. But man, his drumsticks, I cannot endorse enough. I mean, here's mine, you know, that are all beat up from use. I seriously use these sticks. Yeah. He has graciously donated drumsticks to be door prizes. That's awesome. Frank's a super nice guy. I've, I've met him oh. at the shows and um, and I've played his sticks and they're the real deal for sure. No kidding, man. No yeah. kidding. He's he's the bomb. And at the last show, when I opened up the box, he literally printed on the sticks Delaware drum show and cool. then had an additional pair with Joey Boom on the back. I, you know, <laughs> it's like going the extra mile, man. He didn't have to do that. He could have just grabbed a bundle of B sticks, packaged them and shot them out. But yeah. no, he, he, he went the extra mile. So that's awesome. You know, yeah. uh, um, the other is a Keith Larson at Baltimore drum, you know, spreading mm -hmm. it around, spreading it around. He is donating a uh, brand new, it's called four play acrylic snare drum 14 by five brand new beautiful wow. you you could own it for five bucks hmm. uh also hudson music is going to be at the show rob wallace is the president of hudson music which was formerly dci video if there is a famous drummer that you know of this man has videoed them and has created a ser like th the series he created with Neil alone was insane. Yeah. Uh, that early, early Steve Gad video where he's doing brushes on the cardboard box. Yes. And the guy awesome. holding the cardboard <laughs> Just box holding is it. Rob Wallace. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's holding it for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, it, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And Rob and I have become very good friends. I am his vintage restoration person. 
He's going to be at the show. Um, he has graciously donated a signed poster of Gadamans. Wow. That is signed by Steve Gad. That's going to be one of the door prizes. Insane. Awesome. Door prize, kids. Door <laughs> prize. <laughs> That's awesome. And move, moving on also to um, the um, uh, raffles is uh, my buddy, Mike Giuliano at J Drums, who has been supplying the door prizes uh, and raffles for years. He is supplying a, um, and it's, again, it's on the website. You can click on it and, and look at door prize raffles to really see this stuff in detail. It's a maple snare drum uh, that he's created with the drum show logo right on the shell that's cool. going to be available as a door prize and then this also j drums not only snare drum full maple wow. but snare 13 16 and 22 by 18 bass drum for 20 bucks you get a 20 buck raffle ticket you walk out with this drum kit it's insane oh man that's a that's a that's a big boy right there. That snare. Oh drum. man. And it's just <laughs> deep and beautiful. And he does quality, quality work, man. And again, he's one of those local guys <clears throat> that is just killing it, man. Creating his own stuff. Yeah. So man, I mean, and That's you awesome. are, you're faced with all of that and you haven't even hit the room yet. <laughs> So <laughs> that's one of the I mean, I've seen a lot. Most of the drum shows have great raffles, which it's almost an essential thing to do. But you don't see that many um, like snare drums and a drum kit. I mean, you've got a pretty uh, there's a lot to win. So it's indeed. worth it's worth it's worth buying that five dollar ticket for sure. In, indeed. And I have to tell you, it's wonderful to have uh, like one of the vendors just recently is going to be Trinity Symbols. And they said, hey, uh, you know, we'd like to kind of donate something for the door prizes. So there could potentially be door prize items that I haven't even said because they haven't even arrived yet. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people, they get on board and say, man, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to donate this, donate that. So, <clears throat> I mean, you won't even know until you get to the show. I don't even know fully what's going to be there yet. So yeah. you just, yeah. you just got to get there and just dig on it, man. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, all right. What about uh, consignment? I know I okay. mean, that's that's a lot of I mean, it's it's you're primarily having vintage gear and stuff. So, yeah. How does the consignment work? Well, I have to say um, the consignment uh, over the last several shows has been uh, shockingly successful. Hmm. And what that is, is it gives people the ability if they have gear that they're like, man, you know, I need to get rid of this. I need to sell it, whether it's a snare drum, a cymbal a drum kit or all of the above instead of being a vendor for a booth space of you know $150 they can for a single cymbal a single snare drum $5 each a drum set is 20 bucks what they do is they uh, go to the front door pay their admission of 15 to get in of course they'll have to show their mandate uh, situation they then come around the side bring in their gear they register and sign in a consignment. They pay for their items, which is basically a full day of advertisement. Mm -hmm. It then gets brought up to the huge stage. And when I say huge, I mean, the stage is huge. It's the full width of the room, which is like 60 foot and it's like 24 foot deep. Wow. And I have to say that it gets packed. I couldn't mm. believe how much consignment gear comes in the door. And what's kind of wonderful about it is a lot of the vendors themselves who are traveling far, the vintage guys, they're there to buy. Mm -hmm. And I've seen stuff come in, get registered, get up to the stage. These guys flock to them. What do you have? And a lot of times it doesn't even make it up to the stage. Yeah. They're buying it right there. And yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's a fabulous part of the show, again, that gets offered for people to be able to buy sell and trade gear once they register once they pay for it whatever happens is on them if they want to buy sell trade we don't get a percentage i'm not interested in that yeah. you're just coming in and i'm just providing a platform for you to potentially sell your gear 
or yeah. trade or whatever you want to do. Yeah. And that's, uh, I feel like that's where you get some really good deals. But like you said, you got to act fast. And I know from being at, at shows and sharing booths with Vincent um, from Vitalizer, now Junk Rock Drums, man, yes. I mean, Vincent will leave with his Prius where he, there's barely room for him to sit in the car. And like he's left stuff on the, you know, like free stuff on the side of the road. And the, as, as he's leaving, like even rugs and stuff. So people will clean up. So um, so act oh, yeah. fast with that. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And if I may, um, this brings up uh, another topic um, that uh, I'd like to really give a shout out to the people that have have graciously donated their time to be on staff of the Delaware show of Patty, Tony and cuz at the front door, Patty is Mike's wife and friend, Tony and cuz is all in the family. They handle admissions, t-shirts, et cetera. They're there all day. They handle all the money. They do it for the love. I've tried to pay them. They're like, no, we're not interested. It's wonderful. And I, had um, this fellow who, God, the, the people in the community know him as Mr. Sticks. John Morrow is his name. What a, what a wonderful man. He was, um, I met him years ago at the Pennsylvania show. I was uh, a vendor there, of course, newly into it, trying to learn the people and the players. And at one point, this tall gentleman with a big smile literally went ballroom dancing by himself with sticks in his hand <laughs> down the aisle and looked and just gave a great big smile. <laughs> and I was awesome. with my buddy, Mark Weaver, and we watched him dance by and I went, what the hell was that? <laughs> well, it turned out that this was um, a man who was in his element and was just so happy to be at drum shows. And then I met him years later as a vendor at the original Delaware show and just one of, one of the sweetest, warmest people you could ever meet. When he found out I was taking over the show, he called me forthwith and said, how can I be a part of the show? Hmm. I went, well, I need a consignment manager. He went, I'm your man for no pay, for no anything other than, hey, can I bring some stuff? Yes whatever yeah. you want. Wow. He was unbelievably dedicated to that position to the point where I said to him, I said, listen, if people don't have a wristband, they can't get in. So we can't get guys trying to slip in the consignment door. Yeah. Well, at one point I have someone going, Joe, uh, you need to go to consignment area. I go over and Bernard Purdy is there with friends of his. And this guy was not letting him in because his friends did not have the wristband. I was like, Jeez. oh, my God. OK, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, Come he's on doing in. his job. He's doing what you told him. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, a couple of years later, David is sickening, calls me on the phone and goes, I'm trying to get in, but this guy sticks is not letting me. What's going on? Okay. Okay. No problem, Dave. No problem. So then years later, I put like a VIP list <laughs> said sticks. These people can come in, let them in. That's he, awesome. there would be times in the middle of the show. I would look over, there'd be a line down the aisle and he was maddeningly working busy. Well, recently, um, sticks, John, I got word that he wasn't feeling well. He went to the doctor and unfortunately within weeks he was diagnosed with stage four cancer and passed away. Jeez. And we lost a, a, a wonderful drum brother. I mean, of course, not only a consignment manager for me, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. man, he, he was an amazing personality and was missed and loved by many. And, um, uh, I've, I, of course, I'm going to dedicate this year's show to him. And um, yeah, it's 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 a shame. You know, we Bart, I mean, it's 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 all part of life. We, we lose people. But when it goes so uh, quickly like this and hits home, he'll yeah. always be a part of the vintage drum family and would just float around and crack jokes and new people and just loved being a part of it, man. So yeah. sticks, I yeah. know he'll be there in spirit, but we miss you. 
Um, and luckily, I was able to reach out and some people are going to fill the consignment area on, um, you know, they're going to take shifts. My buddy, John Dorn, uh, also Chris um, uh, Rats, I have to get his name again, but from Baltimore Drum, Mark, my buddy Mark Weaver is going to fill in. I will check in as well. So consignment yeah. area will be covered and live on in honor of my buddy and love for you, Mr. Sticks. And we That's know awesome. you're going to be there, buddy. Yeah, I never got to meet him, but I've heard such great things over the last couple of weeks from uh, from a few people. So um, it's nice. You're I mean, it's funny. It takes it takes multiple people to fill the shoes of one. guy. Amazing. Who could, <laughs> amazing. Who had he a, was amazing. <laughs> that's funny. OK, so um, uh, let's talk about um, your clinicians. I think that might be a good thing for the sake of time to jump into. Um, yeah. What do we have this year uh, for clinics? I know seeing right here, we've got some people who have been on the show, uh, Mr. Jason Gianni. So, so explain a little bit what we got in clinicians. Okay. World. So, so as I said earlier that, uh, you know, I have a criteria set up for the clinicians, not that they're just big names. That's going to draw people and get butts in the seats. I have walked out on many big name clinicians because it was like them just sitting there blowing a solo and then just talking about their career. And I went, I'm, I'm out of here. I, this is not what it's about. So this year, uh, okay, well, let me preface a little bit. When, uh, again, when Neil Pert passed away, I got word that there was a gentleman named Mike Zimbeck, who was a Neil Pert and Phil Collins aficionado collection wise he went went over exactly what these guys had and knew everything about them i reached out to him and said hey man would you be interested in bringing your neil pert collection to the show as part of tying in with the t-shirt and honoring neil at the show not only did he agree to do that and did it but he created a mini medley performance for about five minutes of tying in rush tunes together and played them wow. on the actual collection that he had. It was sensational, man. Mm, awesome. Well, one of the people that were with him was this fellow Jason Gianni, who was there totally just to support him and tune the entire kit. He was there tuning the kit. So I got to speak to him a bit and was like, wow, man, this this guy is awesome. He's just here to be a part of it and just assist Mike. So Mike did his performance. It was amazing and is now become a staple of the Delaware drum show of a mini clinic on stage dedicated to a uh, famous drummer. Mike is going to be there again this year from 115 to 130 and he's bringing his insane replica Phil Collins set up cool. and has prepared again a performance medley for Phil Collins. Wow. So Mike's going to be at 115 to 130 the mini clinic that's right up on stage and we invite everybody up onto the stage so it's kind of an intimate little uh, performance area, not just blasting out into the big room. And it's really successful. It's really cool. People are right up front. They can see all around the kit. They chat with Mike afterwards. It's, um, awesome. it creates this, yeah, it creates this really cool little environment amongst the giant area. And it's not uh, away in the clinic room as well. Yeah. So Jason, then I started to kind of view online and saw not only his online presence, but learned that he is an amazing, experienced performer dead to right around the globe and is one of the premier educators at um, a Drummers Collective in New York. Yeah. So I reached out to him and said, hey, man, you know, you think you would be interested in being a clinician this year? He was like, absolutely. It would be my honor. <laughs> what type of clinic do you want? What? <laughs> I said, man, whatever you want to do. So he's passionate. He's experienced. He is a better player than seven eighths of the people that are going to be in the room. And he is a fantastic communicator. That's home run. Yeah. And he lives close. <laughs> <laughs> and he lives close. The other fellow then, I always am in search. I'm constantly viewing online, reaching out because, you know, it's important to have someone that has an online presence 
that I know is going to do some additional promotion as well. You know, it, it, yeah. it all helps. It helps for the cause. Yep. And uh, man, I came across this dude. His name is James Murphy. And he is an uh, educator at the Berkeley School of Music Percussion Department um, up in Boston. And he is really hip. He's cool. He's got a great online presence, no pretense, and is an amazing performer and has this specific personalized um, uh, playing concept that's called glue sticking, mm. where he ties in multiple rhythms within the basis of performance. And I just caught his vibe and said, man, this is this is the guy I reached out for him. And he was like, yes, it would be an honor to be there. So yeah. Mike Zimbeck is going to do his mini clinic. Jason is the first clinician at 11. And then James Murphy is just going to knock socks, dude, at two o'clock. I mean, that's so cool. And I think you're the kind of guy who is very um, detail oriented, which you can probably tell by your, um, you know, your restorations, which I think people um, have seen online. And we can now see behind you a lot of your work for the folks watching the video, which you can see on YouTube um, if you're listening. But these these clinics are not your average um, arena rock drummer coming up and playing to a track, which has its place. I mean, I love yes. them at. Yes. Drum drum days back in, you know, the er, mid, you know, the early 2000s ish, mid 2000s, um, your PASICs, they're awesome. Let's be honest. We love that stuff. But you're doing some specialized stuff, which it's that's kind of how I like to do things as well with this show, as you know. Um, so the, people can trust your special kind of like uh, uh, you, you've just you're curating a really special thing, I think, is is what people can look forward to. Well, you know what, too, Bart, is I was, I devoted my life prior to what I do now to public school instrumental music education. You know, I was the band director, grades three through 12. I've taught anything from kindergarten to um, community college. Mm. So I come from an extensive education background, and it's important to me to offer people something that, as I said earlier, when they leave that room, they're leaving that room inspired and have more information, but are able to have someone that can successfully communicate what they have to someone else, regardless of their level. Yeah. If, if, if you, can, you can have all of this information and all of this talent, and if you can't get it past your nose... I mean, Very you know, then you're sitting at a mini concert going, ha ha. So <laughs> it's people, man, that because this is what I expect as an educator, this is what I expect on the delivering and the receiving end. And man, all three of these people absolutely hit that mark as well, on top of being amazingly experienced performers. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, uh, the other two folks, I, I am sure they're amazing. I can speak to Jason Gianni, who's been on the show, who did um, backbeat drumming in the 40s and 50s was an episode not too long ago. Um, but nice. Man, he knows his stuff and is just oh, such a passionate incredible. guy. So people can really look forward to that. Um, Indeed. So uh, next on our list here to talk about is vendors. So I'm assuming yes, sir. It's, today it's February 4th. This will be out maybe February 6th or 7th, I think, if my math is wrong, isn't wrong. It's probably too late for folks to join up as a vendor at this point, I would say, right? Or if maybe next year they want to get on, how, how do vendors, you know, well, work? Uh, well, and, uh, yeah. Sure. I'll tell you this, that, and again, delawardrum.com, go to the vendor page. You can see the, which, oof, you just reminded me, I have to update it. Um, you can see the most current list. Mm -hmm. And what I also do is I create a complete list of the vendors in alphabetical order what they're bringing, their name, and their contact information so that it can be also used as a reference after the show. There's nothing worse than going to a drum show, seeing something, going home and going, damn it, what was that guy's name? So they can yeah. always use the vendor list as a complete reference and you can contact directly. Vendors can contact each other. I, I purposely did that. So uh, again, from an educational standpoint, but to use the website 
as a year round reference. I have to say, man, that the, the vendors have become, man, some of these guys I've known for years. They're amazing. They're some of the, a, a beautiful combination of the, Middle age, I'd say I'm 61, yeah. my age, older, and the younger guys who have dedicated their lives. Some of these guys, this is what they do. They own or rent space and they fill it with vintage drums. They drive around the country. They go to drum shops. They buy vintage stuff to then turn it around to sell it. It's Jesus. It's yeah. so impressive that these guys are able to do this and have decided to do it and dedicate it. The vendors are coming from South Hadley, Maine, Rochester, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, New Jersey, Nashville, West Virginia, Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Man, oh, it's amazing. Wow. And they are, when I tell you, the top of the top vintage, new Ludwig drums is going to be represented with Terry Bissett. Cool. Zildjian symbols is going to be represented. Peisty symbols is represented. Nikki Moon Trinity symbols. Um, I know I'm leaving some people out again. Yeah, sure. Delaware drum.com vendor, uh, wooden weather, Hawthorne drums. Um, J drums. Michael is going to have a booth. Uh, Charlie Braun, Jack Lawton, Cardinal Percussion is a new vendor this year of all new accessories and drum stuff. But Croker Percussion, who has his beautiful array of cajon slash wooden instruments, etc. Uh, man, man. I, you know, I, I shouldn't get into the listing because there's, <laughs> there's, a, 30, there's a lot of them. <laughs> there's 36 vendors this year. Yeah, I have changed. I changed the setup this year so that there's a better flow through the room instead of two single lines going down. And man, I have to tell you that these people make the effort. They drive the travel. They pay the tolls and gas. They rent the hotel rooms. They buy the booth space. Yeah, and you cannot get a better. I'm confidently saying this, man. You cannot get a better collection of passionate vendors. Across the board, symbols, accessories, new, vintage, used, drums, unit, memorabilia, uh, uh, banners. It, it, dude, it's, it, yeah. it's fabulous. Drumsticks, it, it, you know, JC drumsticks with his amazing persimmon sticks, et cetera, and, et cetera, man. And these people are there to buy, sell, trade, talk. Yeah. Yeah. Hang, Teach. hang their passion. I mean, yes. it's, it's so uh, I think it, it goes without saying that you you clearly care so much about this. And the fact that you're like uh, so every year, it seems like you're improving upon flow and things like Hopefully. that, which which um, I think Rob Cook is the same way because I always equate things. You know, he's the Chicago show. It You got to every year say, all right, maybe this didn't work so well. Let's maybe Indeed. set it up this way. So so you're I think vendors appreciate that. And and. I know it's not just with me, but you've been very, I think you, you are very, uh, nurturing to the younger generation. Maybe it's because you were an educator for so long, you know, in the school system that you like seeing the younger guys come up. Um, and I know I've felt that from you. Um, so I think people like that, not that there's too many people who are curmudgeon and don't want to help younger people, <laughs> you know, in this community, but you are like, especially, uh, as you said in your episode, come on in, the water's fine. Like you want to teach and show people. And I think just in general, that 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 crosses everything in your life and in your uh, working with the Delaware show. So all these vendors, I, I'm sure they're just they're friends with you. They, they definitely are. And I, I have to tell you that uh, after, as I said earlier, you know, when I was up and coming in this and and just meeting people and such and made sure that I respectfully and passionately represented my knowledge, my collection, and my appearance to be in the same league as these people. So that then when I said, hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing a drum show, they're like, we're there. And, you know, when, when you deal with vintage instruments and drums, Bart, you're, veiling, you're, <laughs> you're dealing with vintage people. And to, <laughs> to have... 
younger people passionate about vintage drums and understand their importance, it's what's going to keep it alive. Yeah. And what's going to keep it in the history that these drums, you know, it's always the, it's always the conversation of, okay, well, what is going to be the next important, valuable, collectible vintage yeah. drum? And you can see, of course, that it moves through the decades. For like years ago, it was the 60s oyster pearl colors. And when the 70s bowling ball, if you will, came out, yeah. people were like, ah, that looks like crap because they were, <laughs> you know, with the guys who were comparing it to Ringo and the Beatles era. Sure. Well, man, as years move on, wow, they've become cool in their own right in addition. So it adds and and it moves along to where now we're back into all these the big giant octoplus kits which cracks yep. me up the tama <laughs> of course tama has come back up in you know camco hoshino that era mm -hmm. and to have younger guys that are not also willing to be a part of it but make the commitment to have the brick and mortar shops is like god thank you yeah. Guys, because you're carrying on a legacy of many before you. And, you know, as, as I said, it's no age, no religion, no sexual orientation, playing ability. None of that matters. It's we all have this same passion. And man, everyone's just like, yeah, let's do this together. And they are vital for the continuance of the vintage drum legacy all the way back to the beginning man to the, yeah. to the 1800s yeah so it's it's wonderful and i am ever so grateful for these guys to want to make the effort and i always end by saying thank you for being a part of the success of the delaware drum show thank you yeah totally I think you just hit on a good point, too, of saying thank you to these guys and girls for starting shops and keeping it going, because sometimes you forget that, like, these are people with families and kids, and it's not the safest bet in the world to open a vintage drum shop, oh, even amazing. in a lot of cities where there's multiple. Um, so to take that risk uh, just for our our passions um, is really important and special. It's um, it's amazing. And uh, one other thing I'd like to uh, touch upon, too, is that. As with any drum show, of course, there's always what's known as the volume issue. <laughs> sure. Well, the sound police and stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, I was able to uh, <laughs> entice a horse, you know, um, bribe <laughs> friends of mine to be the volume policeman because it's, you know, it's 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 a it's a daunting task yeah and i say man 15 seconds we don't need gospel and <laughs> heavy metal chops yeah. blasting in the middle of the room it's not about you it's about the instrument yeah. so um you know i this year um bob meyer mark weaver and richard blanchard are going to be my roving volume policemen but in my efforts to continue to involve and approve the show i was able within the facility to find what's known as a demo room mm -hmm. and it is around the back of the stage and away from the main floor uh chris card bucks county drums an amazing custom drum builder in pennsylvania and again mike giuliano of j drums have graciously agreed to have two kits in the demo room there's going to be snare drum stands and cymbal stands so that if somebody wants to really try something out, people have multiple uh, wow. workers in their booth, take them to the demo room. There's going to be people that are monitoring that, myself included, to make sure there isn't complete anarchy <laughs> and a mini concert drum battle going on in there. Yeah, smart. Um, I've never heard of anything like that. That's very smart. Uh, uh, again, trying my best to accommodate all facets of the drum show and at that point it, i mean christ i've got three guys walking around the room intermittently going 15 seconds they're going hey man could you please yeah. not to the players to the booth guys because i got to tell you bart you know by the time 
like one o'clock comes around, you know, people get a little lax, they get a little tired, and all of a yeah. sudden there's some kid sitting there smashing away, and it's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. I mean, I think a lot of people listening to this are drum, you know, fanatics who have been to shows, but no one, it's like I used to work at Guitar Center and, and Sam Ash, and it's like no one really wants. We love drums, but we don't really want to hear someone wailing for five minutes. And it was exactly. like, I mean, it was always exactly. the like mom dropping off the kid and then going next uh, door to like one of those shows or stores that's always next to Guitar Center. And and then the kid would just play and you you feel bad. But at drum shows, you really it drives people insane. That's a drum show. I don't want to say killer, but it's like it's sort of like someone needs to be telling this person. But no one wants to be the bad guy. Yes. But someone's got to just say, like, come on, you're really like everyone's kind of looking like, you know, yeah. Okay, is he going to stop? So so it's cool that you're you're having. I mean, the, the, the demo room is a very smart idea. You're, you're also right where that could turn into absolute yeah, chaos. I, <laughs> but I think it sounds like you've got it. You've got it sort of covered. Yeah, well, theoretically, I got it covered, Bart. But, you know, I'll let you know after this year. <laughs> yeah. But knowing you, you're going to you're going to watch it. You're going to improve upon it. You're going to indeed. Indeed. See what happens. Yeah. And, you know, try to make it best, too, because let's face it, there's there's one other small area in the show, too, that I'm going to set a light up. It's right by like the symbol guys and go go in there, go in there, close the doors, you know, be respectful. Of course, you know, I have signs all over the place inside, outside, be respectful of the instruments, be respect, you know, be respectful of the vendors. If a vendor comes in with a potential client. Stop doing your John Bonham licks and let this guy try out a friggin' snare drum or yeah. a cymbal so he can hear the damn thing. Yeah. So it, it, it oh, again, theoretically, hopefully it's going to work in favor of not only the vendor, but for the, the, the uh, overall result at hand. It's such a dichotomy, man, because it's a drum show. But however, it, it, you know, and look, I could just equate this to personally years ago when the Pearl Masters, and now I'm dating myself, when the Pearl Masters line first came out, I was like, oh my God, these are gorgeous. And I don't know, Sam Ash Guitar Center, or even what store it was at that time. Yeah. They had a brand new kit. And I said to the guy, I said, hey, you know, can I try these out? And of course he was like, yeah, okay. And I sat down and I literally went, bap, bap. Doom, doom, ding, dong, go, 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 bat, go, go, bat, all. I went, okay. And he looked and went, that's it. <laughs> I went, yeah. I mean, what more you do I need? want to hear him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what more I, do I need? Yeah. He went, uh, okay. And I said, you know, can we talk about, and that's all you need. You know, you, okay, ride symbol. You want to live with it a little bit. So I'm yeah. going to try to provide an environment. It may be a little bit more um, inconvenient for the vendor. But on the other hand, it's like, if you want this guy to hear the symbol and really potentially buy it, I'm trying to provide two areas where you can do that. And it's a little more intimate. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good solution to a, to a pretty common problem obviously there's going to be within that solution there may be other problems that i'm sure you'll work out of like getting of the gear in and out and taking it back and re oh, restocking quote unquote but uh i have no doubt that you'll figure it out um really well so i mean you've said it multiple times but people can go to delaware it's delaware drum.com yes sir and uh all the info is there i think that if people are in the vicinity that makes this makes this you know you should drive across the country to go there and be there and check it out but um i think it's it's kind of neat how these drum shows work where the regions are kind of covered by different shows um, oh abso absolutely so, so you've got and, that that corner of the country you know covered. and i have to tell you uh years ago uh, when the uh, rick smith was for years he ran the uh, connecticut show and uh, again, man, when I was a newbie in this, man, I talked to Rick was like, okay, man, what do you do for this? What do you do for, you know, it's like the old Tony Robbins thing. If you want to be successful, 
find someone who already is successful and model what they do. So yeah. I said, okay, I spoke to Rick. I spoke to Jack Lawton when he was running the PA show. I spoke to Rob Cook. Oh my God. I mean, how much Rob, Jesus, he's got the most successful drum show in the world. Yeah. It's a two day international, amazing event. It's it's amazing, man. And I would never in my life attempt to uh, I don't even want to say compete. It's not about competing. You know, I yeah. used to say that to with Rick. We would talk. He's like, so who are you getting for clinicians? Because I don't want to maybe I said, Rick, more than likely, the people regionally that are going to come to my show are not going to are not going to go to yours and True. vice yeah. versa. Like, you know, the guys on the a cusp of New York, Long Island, they're like, mm, I'm going to Connecticut, yeah. you know, or a little lower. Well, n now that Rick has said man, several years ago, that's it. I'm done. I've had it. There is no Connecticut show. It really leaves it now open for New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Virginia, West, you know, where Nashville, I mean, Western Pennsylvania, it's pretty much the Northeast corridor that yeah. I really try to, that's why I, man, I try to work so hard to have an event that's going to be worthy of someone making the, not just the financial effort, but making the travel effort to go, you know what, man, that was worth going to. And I'm glad I went to it. And I'm glad that I was able to be a part of it. So because yeah. of the absence of the Connecticut show, it's pretty much Delaware, of course, um, Chicago. And then the newest one that's propped up is, you know, the, the Music City drum show. And what's beautiful is, again, it's not who's better than who, because each show has its own personality. Totally. And that's... You know, people explain that to me that they're like, dude, relax. Your show has got a vibe to it. And man, it's not about competition. Hey, the more drum shows, the merrier, I think. Yeah. As long as they don't compete time wise and location wise, yeah. man, no, let's there has to be more than this. there has to be more than one. There's more in different, you know, they have to be in different locations. Uh, Indeed. That just makes if if people like the Chicago show in May, then in February they're gonna love your show. I mean, they're they're it gets them yes. more into it and excited. And um, there's no one better to be running this um, that I think cares about the attendees and the vendors and everything. So I think people can really look forward to it. Uh, but and I'm sorry to cut in, but I, yeah. I really feel as though if I'm gonna mention drum shows, the St. Louis show also has been doing their thing. The Las Vegas drum show, which has come on. I remember speaking to that gentleman um, about his facility and this and that, which is a, a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. And um, man, who am I missing? Chicago, St. Louis. Oh, uh, Poe Shy doing his Covington yes. Rogers show. Yeah, you close know what, to man? me. Talk about a show that's got its own vibe to it, which is wonderful, man. And they had, you know, they did like their own parade that they man did. And, you know, I have to say shout out to the Covington and the Rogers guys. They are so passionate about yeah. Rogers drum, which is wonderful. There's a beautiful history there, yeah. man, that uh, and and I believe Poe told me that he's he's going to make the effort and come out to the um, Delaware show, which is wonderful. So. You know, awesome. if somebody is is crazy enough to to say they're going to produce one of these things and put an event together, they deserve um, the accolades and the applause to if you can't attend it to at least acknowledge it here, which is is again, it's it's what it's all about. It's not about competition. It's about us sharing our passion and individuals wanting to take the next step you know, they need to be respected and, and honored and thanked yeah. for doing that for the rest who are not able to do it. No, because you're right. Because you think about it. It's just a drum show. But no, there are literal. I mean, you are creating an event where there's health and safety involved. There's Indeed. food. There's beer, I'm assuming, or drinks. I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there's, there's things. Absolutely. Uh, 
nothing better than walking around a drum show holding a beer. <laughs> oh, it's you know, I and I have to tell you too that once I get in and the show is and and um and then I can relax, I start looking around, and that's when I realize there are people that I know who are hanging, they got a beer in their hand, and they're all just hanging doing the drum vibe. That's when I walk around and go, Oh my god, this is so cool. Yeah. You've done it. <laughs> yeah, now you can relax. That's awesome. Well, um, I think this has just been perfect. It gives us a glimpse into how these drum shows work with someone who is clearly very passionate. And uh, and I think I said it earlier in the episode, but you were the first interview I did uh, at, at ever for this podcast. And I found you through a Jim Messina video uh, yes. on YouTube. And I remember just sitting in my basement at my old house going, that's the guy I need to get on for this. <laughs> Who's this, that kook? <laughs> yeah, for this crazy <laughs> idea of this podcast. So again, you were just like, yes, uh, I want to help out and come on the show. And you did. And uh, things have been, um, you know, great ever since. So awesome. thank you for that. Awesome ever since. Uh, thank you, Bart. It's yeah. such a, a pleasure. And as I told you early on, and I thank you for those accolades, but so proud of what you are doing and what you've achieved. You know, you weren't just like some kid in his basement going, I'd like to try this. And then after four or five, you peter out. You not only have taken it, but, uh, and I know I threw a bunch of names, talk to this guy, talk to that guy. Yes. And you did. And then you just launched on your own and just took it to a whole new level and continue to take it to a level and evolve it. And kudos to you, Bart Vanderzee, for even allowing me to have a platform like this to talk about the drum show. I sure. felt thank you so much to my man. pleasure. You're the, you're the best. And it means a lot to hear that from you. Um, I'm no longer a kid in the basement. I'm a, I'm a guy in his unfinished third floor <laughs> attic right now. So I've, I've graduated, but um, so uh, Joe is going to be nice enough to join us for a Patreon bonus episode. Um, and we're going to talk about his boom creations. He makes amazing modern restorations of um wooden like rolling bombers and the world war ii era kits um so if you want to hear that you can go to drumhistorypodcast.com i uh, click the patreon link and join up for as little as two bucks a month and i believe actually this is gonna be a video mm -hmm. one because joe's gonna show us some cool uh his latest creation um so Indeed. again go over to the website and uh check it out and join up which a lot of you folks have been doing which i greatly appreciate um so on that note Joe, thank you for being here. Uh, again, folks can go to DelawareDrum.com. I'll have the link in the description and anything else. Um, Joe, my man, thank you for being here. Thank you so much again, Bart. It was a pleasure. And uh, I certainly look forward to the next time we will be face-to-face -face and hugging. As do I. <laughs>